throwing and shoving are what Defenestrafsion has dedicated his life to, and if there is a window nearby, then all the better. Defenestrafsion didn't care too much for the Githyanki way of life and would often travel around the material plane, causing havoc to the lower races just for the fun of it. When it was time for his coming of age ceremony, he knew how, exactly how, he wanted to kill the Mind Flayer by shoving it off a high place. And he had been assigned to raid a Gath, which is where we join him. And here is Defenestrafsion. He is an outlander which makes sense as a Githyanki, giving him proficiency in athletics and survival. As a race, he is a Githyanki, which importantly gives him strength plus two and some proficiency in medium armor, which helps us because we are a rogue and we won't have the highest dexterity. As for his appearance, I mean, this looks like the sort of person who would chuck up another person out the window, right? As for skills, we get quite a lot to choose from. We've got perception, this is to find all the best windows. Acrobatics, athletics comes with a uh, class further down. Where does it come from? I oh, know athletics comes from uh, background, not class. There's a mistake there. Uh, deception to get people close enough to him and to trust him before he throws or shoves them off a high place. Slight of hand and stealth because, well, he's still a rogue, isn't he? Then for abilities, we're maxing out strength to get the best chance to shove and to have the best chance of throwing someone. Dexterity and constitution at 14 because he doesn't want to die. He's not silly. And then all the rest down as low as they need to be. And he also has expertise in athletics and acrobatics, because he is not going to be defenestrated himself. At level 2, we just get dash and disengage as bonus actions, no choices to be made. At level 3, we get the choice between arcane trickster or thief. As much as the trickster might kind of fit into his background, he is actually going to be more like a thief, because, well, we'll see why later. And also at level 3, it doesn't tell us here, but Githyanki do get the spell Jump. And actually, that's kind of why he's taking Thief, because he can jump a long way. Or we'll be able to in one turn in combat. And at level 4, he's just going to go and max out his strength. He wants to be able to shove people harder and throw heavier things. So it's time for the items, and something I haven't really done before with my build, but it's something I do actually do when I play, is I'm not going to have just one item for every slot. I'm going to go through some of the slots anyway. We'll have a couple of items that could be there. So starting at the top, I'm going to start with Lifebringer. This is to give three temporary hit points during combat. This could be switched out for various things, even just a helmet since he has proficiency in medium armor. But, you know, we can see lightning charges. Where do the lightning charges come from? Speedy light feet, which are great because they give athletics plus one and they give lightning charges, which help us uh, deal damage in combat. And the jolt shooter, which gives two lightning charges on a, on a hit. And the nice thing here is that he can use sneak attack with jolt shooter. Or the armor gone scale mail plus one. This, of course, could be Githyanki armor, but he thinks a scale mail armor plus one looks more fashionable. Sparkle hands, where it has plus one to strength and dexterity checks. As long as they have lightning charges so during combat he'll have a plus one to strength checks which means an extra plus one to acrobatics he's given himself the silver pendant for guidance this is because it gives an extra 1d4 to all checks ability checks which includes shoving the ring of poison resistance and the smuggler's ring these could be switched out at this point in the game the color spray ring ring maybe because his action could be used to blind someone which can help the party and for his melee weapon i've got hammercraft here and this is because he can do lots of jumping and every time he jumps, he can do some damage. He is not proficient with Hammerhaft, which does mean he doesn't get Tenacity or Concussive Smash or Backbreaker or the proficiency bonus to attack rolls. Although it says his attack bonus is plus, five, uh, plus seven, it's really just plus five. We can see here it's plus five, but in this other screen here, it says plus seven. As for other alternatives, he did pick up the other Burn Blade. If we're going for pure damage, with the action then we can use this since he is proficient with it and he's got a strength of 20 and the strength is 20 because we took the hag's hair from ethel and gave the strength to him and one alternative to sparkle hands is fleet fingers so once per turn when the rare dashes or takes a similar action they can jump without using a bonus action this is good because then in one turn it means that the fenestration can dash to get lightning charges and then jump twice still rather than just having to jump or dash but the sparkle hands gives him a better chance to shove so it's kind of it's depending how he's feeling whether he wants the extra bonus from the sparkle hands or he wants the extra jumping or shoving you can switch these around and again with the weapon if you're going to be lot doing lots of jumping rather than attacking and shoving then hammer is the way to go but one downside is he doesn't get sneak attack 
with either the Everburn Blade or Hammerhraft because we do need a finesse weapon and that's just he's just not into his melee finesse weapons. He's not sorry about it. He's got his ranged weapon here if he wants to use sneak attack. I've also got Gale, this is all part of more of how to play now, the build, with Enlarge Reduce, which would give him advantage on strength checks, which would give him advantage on his shove. I'm not necessarily going to use that every single combat, but I'm about to come up to a combat here, and I will be showing you a few more items later that you could pick up in Grim, if you, in Grim Forge, sorry, if you are heading down that way early in the playthrough. So one thing we can do, but only once per long rest, is jump. I'm not going to use it quite yet. And I wonder whether... I don't have any feather fall, but it's fine. He's a thief. He's got resistance to full damage. He'll be okay. And because I think I might be doing some jumping, I'm going to give him Hammerhaft. And because because he's a clever Gith Yankee, he's going to jump to about here. At least I think he's clever. Yeah. So, without any lightning charges, let's just have a look at this. You saw me just check that. He's got a 95% chance to shove. Let's dash... Why dash? Because this should now be... Uh, no, it's not 100%. But it should give him plus 1 to his checks here. Look at this. Athletics is plus 10. I don't think that's included the plus 1 from the Sparkle Hands, which is a shame. Anyway. First thing he's going to do... I... Oh, now I do not know why that didn't work. And he is too heavy to throw. Which is a... Very sad indeed. So he's just going to try a good old swipe because he can. So this is off to a bad start, but things will get better. We're back at the next turn. Gale cast enlarge on him, which is why he's this tall. He's also going to cast jump. We can jump around. I'm going to try and shove again. Yeah, goodbye. One person def... Well, there's no window, is there? It's not really defenestration in this case. But with jump, we can get to here, no problem. And one nice thing is that the lightning charges have damage on top of the thunder damage from uh, from Hammercraft on the shockwave. Now this isn't the Fenest Travshin, but Lazel is also taking note of what he is doing. And they're too heavy to throw. Gale slept Lurgan, but we have a 100% chance to shove sleeping targets. Because they automatically fail strength saving throws. Gek Kull thought he was really clever by going invisible. I happen to see where he jumped to though. He ran, or walked and jumped. And I think, oh, I'm kind of hoping, somewhere very close to here. There he is. Can't get away. 98% chance to shove off the side here. I wonder if we can land him in some water rather than down on the ground below. And to make things even more likely to work, he's going to cast Guidance on himself. Switching between 98 and 100% chance to work. Down he goes. 23 damage with one lightning damage on top for good measure. The Fenestravshin here was fairly unlucky because he got hit critically, which is why Helmet would be useful. And he's now surrounded by three enemies. Now he doesn't really have any AoE abilities apart from his jump, which you could potentially use to maybe kill one of them, but two of them are still going to be here. And he lost concentration on Guidance, but he's kind of hoping that won't matter. Shove one. And then if we hopefully get this in the right place, might be able to throw someone off the side. It's not looking good, is it? Oh, there we are. Throw one off. And then shove the other one away. That could have been from a much better position. At this point, he might want some help from one of his teammates. Thankfully, a starin is on hand. We help at least finish this one off. Get Cole has come up this way to face down Lazel, but Defender Stravshin has yelled over to her, don't worry, leave him to me. But Lazel doesn't always take orders properly, so she's going to have a quick go with a nice pommel strike first, just in case that was going to help, and then she's going to get out of the way, because she knows exactly what weapon he is holding. So he's going to dash, he could dash again. Is he going to shove, or is he going to jump? I think... He's going to get all the way over here. Got to be careful with our bonus actions. His shove and jump both take bonus action now. We've got to get in the right position. Get Cole is enlarged, which should mean that he has a... Uh, well, it should make it more difficult to shove him. I 
does look like, though, I'm not going to shove him off the side, which is not part of the plan. Whereas shoving something like Logan here would go a long way. Maybe it's because he's heavier. I'm not sure. Should make sense, actually. Yeah, that didn't work out as planned. So Gale is hopefully going to go over the tops. Uh, this might not even work. Didn't pick up the Sapphire Spark yet. Ooh, didn't need to. All right, Defender strategy has got one last target being Novice Garmo, who is as being enlarged. Well, when he's enlarged, you can't shove him very far, so we're going to have to get rid of enlarged first. And having just attacked Novice Garmo with a Starion, he isn't concentrating on enlarged. The way I got here, don't cast enlarged as a spell. It's just an innate ability, so we're just going to kill him the usual way. Now, Defender strategy won't be able to kill this guy all by himself. Look at that, he just jumped through a window, whether you knew it or not. But he can have a good go. Unfortunately, he doesn't have any dark vision, which is a shame. If everyone else minds their business, but if melee fine. attacks don't work, we can try. Oh no, we can't try sneak attack. But ooh, look at that critical hit just when we needed it, and we should find that star in here no trace. and finish him. Oh, all right, gonna head into Grimforge and pick up a couple of items. Now, before we get to Grimforge, how could I not go through this battle, which is absolutely. I think famous for this sort of thing. Unless I roll a one. <laughs> well, let's still do this again. Let's use some inspiration, shall we? Surely can't get one twice in a row. No. Oof. I like how Lazel and the Starion approve of this. So, unfortunately, Defender Stravshin came last in the initiative order. Uh, but Bonner jumped up close, being enlarged, and there is an 85% chance for this to work, which is fairly good, but I can make this 90% or higher with guidance. There's obviously still the option of ro rolling a 1. Oh, goodbye. And he still has the hammer craft on. I did change the... actually, yes. I changed his gloves, so he should get... there we are. Free jump. Noting all those around him, which is kind of nice. Lazel, while not as versed at actual shoving as Defender Stravshin, she can't resist a pushing attack. Sadly, he passed a saving throw. And these Dwegar cannot help but set themselves up for this. One. And... Oh, Lazel is in the way. Can't throw her out of the way either. Maybe she, maybe she should shove her off the boat. Oh, Lazel, why is she in the way? Right. I do also know there is an invisible Vergar down below. Somewhere down here. There they are. Not very nice of them. Let's take that that two damage. Ooh, that's unlucky. Right. Uh target's obscured. That's uh yeah, that's pretty sad. We don't have dark vision, one downside to this guy, but we're gonna try. Lazel is going to learn her lesson. <laughs> Gonna get out the way. Gonna come along. Uh, actually, no, we're just gonna run up. No shoving left, which is a bit sad. That's my own fault. Not his fault. Uh, so, with the action, I guess we're just gonna attack. And who knows? <laughs> because of the lightning charges, that jump killed him. So one of the new items I've picked up down here in Grimforge is the ring or fetish of Caliduran Smooth Hands, which allows Defenest Travshin to cast invisibility. Now, why would he want to do that? Well, let's look at this. He's got an 85% chance to shove this Dwergar down <laughs> into the, the hole below. Now, we could have guidance. We could use Enlarge on, with using Gale on him to increase his chances. However... Can do instead. Just go invisible. 100% chance. You, if you shove while unseen, uh, then it's 100% chance. We can do this with sneaking. So that's not going to work out, is it? Now, after using up invisibility, this next item isn't from uh, Grimforge. It's actually from, from Sovereign Sport. After killing out the Dwergar, we got Shadow Amenzo Baranzen. And we can also go invisible. Twice in the long rest. Obviously, I've just wasted both uses in my long rest. And down she goes. 
They'll fail. Who cares? And this is one other great reason for picking a thief as the subclass is because in one turn he can, in theory, sneak and shove. Tad here has made the grave mistake of standing on the ledge of something, at the edge of something. I've gone to turn-based mode so he doesn't turn around. So there's a 90% chance to shove. Again, that's, that's pretty good. In fact, very good. I don't need However, right we hide. Bye-bye. Re-experience. Let's come out of turn-based mode. Apparently, everyone's none the wiser. Unfortunately, I've used up my, my items here for the long rest. Otherwise, I'd probably be trying to... Let's not try. Ooh, 95% chance she's just not quite close enough to the edge. But we get two in a row. Oh no, I can't actually shove it down that side. And shoving isn't an automatic cause for combat. So I might be able to shove one or two more people before getting into trouble. Oh, there goes another one. Apparently nobody really cares. This is all very nice. Hide and shove. And if they don't get out quickly enough, they're going to die. Oh, wait, what was that for? I don't know. Oh, down you go. I'm going to pretend there's a window up here. Although it's not a window. And I'm going to shove one more Dwergar perhaps down in that direction. Let's try it out. So a bit more shoving. 95% chance. I probably won't be able to shove them right off the edge there. Oh, there we are. Only the I've now done enough. <laughs> Apparently been mean enough. And so, what we're going to do is dash with our bonus action. But I remember we're a thief. We've got resistance to full damage. And since they are prone... Oh, I've just used up my second. Uh, oh, I jumped without using this. Completely my fault. We can at least try this. And they only hate Defender Stravishan, which is fair enough. He's the only one who's been shoving people off the side. And hopefully we'll last one more turn. So he can shove her off at the start of the next turn. If I'd still had the items, item abilities, I could have then <laughs> just gone invisible and run away. Oh, it says it's not actually going to shove her off down into the abyss. Oh, well, it wouldn't have worked last turn anyway, even if I hadn't messed it up. And so there we are. That will do. That will be the end here. So let me know what you think of this, this guy. Has he shoved enough people? Is he good enough at shoving? Did he tell you to shove off? Thank you very much for watching. If you've made it this far, please consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.